I'm stuck. At this point, Stephen is having a behavioral problem, but at the meantime, he's very sick and he needs medical help. And we're not gonna... That is Stephen's problem. You come here for help. And at this point, there's nothing I can do to help. So you're done here. Wait, Sit down right over there. No, I'm... This is completely unacceptable. Lacey's story on the show is one for the books. We're talking diabetes, cholesterol through the roof, and blood pressure that could give a rocket launch a run for its money. And let's not forget her bones practically screaming for mercy under all that weight. She once said she felt like a T-Rex big steps, but moving at a snail s pace. You can only imagine the emotional roller coaster she's on. Hello everyone. Today we're diving into the drama when Dr. Now canceled rude patients on my 600 pounds life. Trust me, you don't want to miss these epic showdowns. So before we get started, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, and get ready for some serious sass. Let's jump right in. Heat rash in places that never goes away no matter how clean I am. I have stabbing pain in my feet and really dull, crushing pain in my lower back. It's not a fun time. My right knee is the worst pain I've ever had in my life. I struggle with diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and it's all because of my weight. But let's rewind to her childhood. Lacey didn't exactly have a fairy tale upbringing. Her dad had an anger problem, and her mom? Well, she made it clear Lacey was an unplanned surprise. Born despite her mother's IUD, Lacey grew up with constant reminders that she was not exactly wanted. It is no wonder she turned to food for comfort. When I was writing Christmas cards, I'd get really emotional. That told me, Oh my gosh, I think I'm pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> when I was very young, she told me that I was an IUD baby in an accident. It made me feel like a disaster. So my self-esteem was disgustingly low as a child. The trauma train did not stop there. Imagine being in third grade and enduring the horror of rape, only to have your own mom not believe you. That is when food became more than just sustenance for Lacey, it became her escape, her solace. This is where her complicated relationship with food began, setting the stage for her future struggles. The summer before third grade, I began hanging out with a new kid on the block and we were playing one day and he wanted me to go to his house. And when I went over, his older brother lived in the basement and I was dragged to the basement by my friend for his elder brother to have sex with me. It was a horrific experience. I didn't know what to do. I didn't think anyone would believe me, so I never told anyone about this. When we first met Lacey on the show, she was 539 pounds and had Ricky, her knight in shining armor, by her side. Ricky did everything for her, from cooking meals to helping her with basic hygiene. But was he really helping or just enabling her unhealthy habits? Technically, I've been in three feet of relationships with men but I haven't done that in a long time. Thankfully, I have Ricky now, who's not like those other guys, because he wants the best for me. So we're together now, and I'm thankful to have him. Not just to have somebody to help me, but because I know he loves me. Lacey's turning point came when she met Dr. Now. He set her a tough goal, lose 50 pounds in a month. She started off with gusto, but life, as always, had other plans. She missed appointments and fell back into her old eating habits, the million dollar question is, can she ever break free from this cycle of emotional eating? There will break down at 1200 calories a day, low carb, high protein diet that you need to follow completely. Okay. And understand to correct your eating habit. And I'm gonna give you some exercises that you can do at home. And I want you to do those twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. So in two months, you need to lose 50 pounds. That won't be hard to do at all. Okay. The drama did not stop there. Things got so heated between Lacey and Ricky that she ended up calling the cops on him and his sister Sharon, claiming she did not feel safe. This all went down on the road to Houston, leaving Lacey abandoned on the roadside. Talk about hitting rock bottom. In my case, she's trying to blame me for abusing her. Get whatever the she needs off my U-Haul and her is gone. You watch it, it will be at the U-Haul place. Woman, you don't even know what the you just did. 
I'm not a abuser person. I am a realist, nicest. As for her weight loss journey, sticking to Dr. Now's strict diet plan proved to be a Herculean task. Despite the best intentions, the pounds just would not come off. Dr. Now gave her multiple chances, but in the end, he had to make the tough call to remove her from the program. Commitment is key, and Lacey just could not make it stick. Well, you know, you have the guidance that we give you, and you have to use that. And if you don't follow that, there's nothing we can do to change that, okay? Yes. So stick with healthy eating habit. Read the stuff we gave you every night and check out and see what you did wrong and don't make those mistakes tomorrow. Yes, okay? sir. When we first met David Nelson on the show, it was pretty obvious that his story was going to be one of those heart-wrenching tales that stick with you. At 30, David's struggle with his weight had hit a critical point, leaving him gasping for breath like a fish out of water. It's so hard to force myself to get up in the mornings because my back is messed up from my weight. The back started getting so bad. I'm in agonizing pain. That's when my weight really is. David's life started off rough. Born to a heroin addict mother and abandoned by his father, he was tossed into the foster care system at a young age. Moving from one foster home to another, the availability of food was a lottery some days he ate well, other days he starved. So he learned to eat whatever he could, whenever he could, turning this survival tactic into a lifelong struggle with food. And so I went right into foster care. I bounced around to different foster care, houses while I was young. Sometimes I was put in houses that weren't very good with foster parents that didn't really care about kids. Some people are just in it for the money that the state gives them for taking in kids. We'd eat really poorly. So from an early age, I learned to eat as much as I could. Adopted at six, you might think things got better, right? Wrong. His foster dad was the kind who thought discipline meant leaving marks with a belt, and his foster mom was no saint either. She once dragged him to the garage and broke his nose with a punch. In the middle of all this chaos, food became David's only comfort. When I would get disciplined, he would hit me so hard with the belt, it would leave marks. My foster mom would hit me too. I remember she took me to the garage as a punishment and slapped me in the face a bunch, and I broke my nose. I would eat to make myself feel better because food calmed my nerves. It was comfort. All through my childhood years, I was taking comfort in food any chance I could get. As an adult, David found work at Walmart and later as a truck driver, spending a year on the road without a break. This job took him all over the country, sleeping in his truck and seeing America from behind a windshield. But the constant travel only deepened his depression and fast food became his go-to diet, causing his weight to skyrocket. In trucks for farmers, and then that got me into long distance driving. I wanted to see the United States and I could afford to because when I was sleeping in my semi-truck, I didn't have to pay rent. So I got to see all the states. I didn't leave the road for a year. This was pretty cool. But at the same time, on an emotional level, I noticed that I was depressed. And I kept eating fast food because that is what's available on the road. At his lowest point, David even considered ending it all a dark reflection of the immense internal battles he faced daily. Things took a terrifying turn when he developed cellulitis, a severe skin infection that nearly took his life. Weighing in at a staggering 763 pounds, David realized he needed a miracle. Enter Dr. Now. I had a severe cellulitis infection. After some physical therapy and a bunch of antibiotics and tests and stuff, they got rid of the cellulitis infection. But I was a mess, and that's when I reached out to Robin. That's when I decided to try to lose weight and start taking my mental health and physical health more serious. I moved in with Robin after I left the hospital because they were going to find me a physical therapy unit to move into, but they couldn't find one that would take my size. David's initial progress was impressive, dropping 68 pounds in just a few months. But then life threw him a curveball and he slid back to his original weight of 733 pounds. Doctor now had no choice but to cancel his surgery. Talk about a gut punch, but David did not give up. He dug deep, lost 94 pounds, and finally got his surgery. Instead of losing 30 pounds, you gained 38 pounds. So you're just about 70 pounds away from where you should be today. So we're not gonna be able to do your surgery. So I'm canceling it because of your weight gain, okay? Okay. All right, so what happened? Yeah, it was just uh, stressful with the move and everything, and I think um, got off track a little bit, so. All right, folks. If you're enjoying these jaw-dropping moments, 
Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And drop a comment below with your favorite savage moment from Dr. Now so far. Things are about to heat up even more, so stick around. Entreon Shannon's journey on the show is nothing short of a wild roller coaster ride packed with UPS downs and a lot of failures. Entreon was grappling with some serious health issues, congestive heart failure, diabetes, and a cocktail of 13 to 14 medications every day. Imagine having to juggle all those pills daily. But how did he end up like this? The worst is already beginning to happen. It's definitely no way to live. I take about 13 to 14 different medications to make sure my heart does not fail. And that's the only thing that keeps me out of the hospital. Delving into Entreon's past, it is clear his relationship with food runs deep. Since he was a kid, Entreon found comfort in food. He would hang out with his grandmother, playing games and munching on snacks. By the time he was 18, he already weighed around 450 pounds. Was his grandmother an enabler, perhaps? And what do we do? We eat. We play games, but we eat. We do this, but we eat. And so food and good food was always present. How many calories is that? What you're supposed to eat. <laughs> <laughs> you want to put some honey on it? Oh. <laughs> Three more. We was a church-going family. My grandparents and my mother definitely kept me in church a lot. His background was tough, too. Growing up in a single-parent family, Entreon experienced the loss of his grandfather and father to heart issues. He lost his job and then got hit with his own heart failure diagnosis. When things got rough, Entreon turned to food for comfort. How will these factors influence his quest for a healthier life? In 10 to 14 hour days. At first, my size worked in my favor. Being big helped intimidate customers who came to steal things. And that's when I started to have health issues of my own and that got diagnosed with congestive heart failure. And then the cardiologist cut me off as her patient. And she said that there's nothing that we can do for you. I lost my job at the store and had a total mental breakdown. I ended up becoming suicidal. Things got even tougher when he lost his job as a security guard because of his heart condition. Entreon's wife, Musa, was his main support. He wanted to start a family with her, but she was worried about his health and asked him to lose weight first. What will he do to turn his life around? I saw that he was willing to change, and so I gave him a chance. But now he wants a family. I cannot give it to him unless he loses that weight so that we help each other. You done? Thank you very much. Yeah. It was really actually good. Compliments to the show. Mm. In a critical turn of events, Entreon decided to seek help from Dr. Now, weighing in at 702 pounds. Dr. Now gave him a plan, a 1,200 calorie diet and some exercise, hoping to see him lose 80 pounds in two months. But sticking to the plan was harder than expected. Will he really commit to the program? But the first step is you showing that you are willing to do what you say, because it sounds like you said all this before. And so far, it seems like you're going the other direction. Okay, so to get you started, I'm going to give you a 1200 calorie diet that is high protein, low carb. I'm going to walk you through it and I want you to start that immediately. Yes, sir. Three months later, Entreon had only lost 19 pounds. Instead of following the diet, he added protein shakes and peanut butter. When Dr. Now asked him about it, Entreon could not really explain why. He was non serious during the whole conversation, laughing it off. Why was he not following the diet? He will go back to the doctor so that he can explain to you because it's not there. Like, it feels like maybe the food is the same. I told him, if you go through the book and look at the, the food, it's not the same. It's different kinds. Just because you don't like it, but it's good for you, just take it. Because if you're full, you're not going to think of taking peanut butter. That's what I told him. So we're waiting to come back so that you tell him that the shakes is a no-no. Peanut butter is a no-no. Despite Dr. Now's warning, Entreon's subsequent actions were disheartening, to say the least. Frustrated but not defeated, Dr. Now set another 80-pound challenge, hinting at the grim reality that Entreon might not make it another four months if things did not change. But change, it seemed, was a tough ask. At his next checkup, Entreon had actually gained six pounds. Still joking, still shrugging it off. Will he ever overcome his obstacles? Hello, how y'all doing? Good, how are you? Good. So is the young lady with you? Uh, this is my aunt. It's actually my mom's friend, but I call her Aunt Pat. 
Okay. Know, that was a little, a little so bit. what happened to your wife? She <laughs> gave up on you? <laughs> no, no, she <laughs> she didn't give up on me. She uh she had a couple of appointments and stuff, and so. Seeing his lack of seriousness, Doctor now suggested seeing a psychotherapist, hoping to understand Antrian's struggles. The psychotherapist advised him to list all his grievances as if he were composing a sermon. And can you believe it? He turned up with a coffee and a cinnamon roll, ready to sit down and draft that sermon. How ironic. You know, um, I feel like you have two kinds of weight to lose. Yeah. And, and the physical weight is almost less important than the emotional weight. You're, you're, yeah. you're carrying around 700 pounds of emotional weight too. But it seems like the emotional weight is heavier than the physical. Yeah. So, Antrian, I'm, I'm going to bring your wife in. Is that okay? Yes. We'll, we'll talk about the homework, okay? Okay. In the end, the outcome of Antrian's story was both shocking and disheartening. Antrian's weight had climbed to 704 pounds by the end of his episode. Gaining 15 pounds when he was supposed to be losing them was a gut punch to viewers and, undoubtedly, to Antrian himself. Antrian's journey is one of the most insanely failed cases in the show's history. It feels like no matter what I do, it's not going to be good enough. I can't help but feel that I messed up my chances because I know the doctor now would not be happy. And if he gives up on me, then I know that I will have let Musa down. Crystal's story on the show is nothing short of a dramatic roller coaster, complete with twists, turns, and the occasional free fall. At 34, Crystal was not just facing diabetes, hypertension, and polycystic ovarian syndrome PCOS, which brought the delightful bonus of hair in all the wrong places, but also a nerve-damaged stomach. If you think your life is complicated, just wait. But I hate making him do that, because I know it's hard for him. Right behind you. Medicine first. But my body is in such bad shape now, and I have all these medical conditions making everything worse for me. You know, first it started with things like joint pain, and it's been hard to breathe when I do too much. From the get-go, Crystal's relationship with her body was more complex than a soap opera plot. As a kid, she found solace in food, using it as an escape from reality. By the age of five, binge eating was her go-to coping mechanism, especially after facing some serious sexual trauma from a family friend. And the hits just kept on coming. Her mother's abusive partner made sure there was no shortage of physical and emotional scars. By 10, Crystal was over 250 pounds, proving that food had become a refuge. But seriously, can anyone blame her? When I was a toddler, my weight was normal. It wasn't until I was around five that my weight gain started. Christmas Eve, right before I turned five years old. We went and stayed with some family for the holidays, and that's when one of them molested me for the first time. After that, my life was never the same. But that was just the start of it, because it lasted until I was 13. Her health was a ticking time bomb. Crystal knew she needed serious help. Enter Dr. Now, stage left. Weighing in at a staggering 618 pounds, Crystal met Dr. Now, who was less than impressed with her lifestyle choices. Imagine sleeping 15 to 16 hours a day and starting your morning with ramen noodles and cheeseburgers. Dr. Now's reaction? Priceless? Sometimes I'll take a nap or go sit in the front room and watch a movie. I just woke up, you take a nap? Yeah. Okay, and what time do you go to bed? I'm usually in bed by 7, 7.30. So you sleep from 7.30 till 11 o'clock next day? Mm-hmm. You know how many hours is that? Way too many. You know, the fact that you sleep from 7 o'clock at night till 11 o'clock next day is very abnormal, okay? Mm -hmm. So you should get eight hours of sleep. Okay. Okay? And that's not healthy, but depression may be a factor in that too. Doctor now put her on a strict regimen cut sleep to eight hours and consult with Dr. Paradise, the psychotherapist. Dr. Paradise suggested journaling to help Crystal process her traumas, famously saying, you have kept so much inside you probably have books inside of you of things that have never been said will writing in a journal really turn things around? And I want you to use that journal as a way to start being a little vulnerable in your writing. Okay. Because you, you were quiet for so long. You kept so much inside. I, I, you probably have books inside of you of things that didn't get said. Start, start writing it now. Okay. Get, get it out. Okay. Crystal, thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you. Crystal's initial efforts were promising. At her second checkup, she weighed 591 pounds. Doctor now set a new goal, lose 80 pounds in two months. Crystal worked hard and at her next visit, she dropped to 526 pounds, 
finally getting cleared for surgery. Cue the applause. But can she keep up this momentum? That's good. I'm glad to see all your progress. You didn't make it to an 80 pound goal, but you're losing more per month this time. And in total, you're getting close to losing 100 pounds. So you've been sticking with it for a few months. So I'm gonna go ahead and improve you for weight loss surgery. That sound good? That's amazing. Okay. So before we do that, you need to move down here to Houston. Are you ready to do that? Yes. Of course, life had other plans. Crystal missed her appointments for seven months, and when she returned, she had ballooned back to 579 pounds. The weight gain meant no surgery for Crystal, making her story one of the show's most unexpected and dramatic failures. What a plot twist. There you have it, folks. Thanks for sticking with us through all the drama and savage confrontations. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. Share this video with anyone who needs a dose of Dr. Now's tough love and leave a comment with your thoughts on today's epic showdowns. Until next time, keep it real and stay healthy. No matter how hard it gets, you need to stay on track or we won't move ahead with your weight loss surgery. I know it's just been a whole lot longer for me to try and do this on my own. I understand that, but you're still gaining, so that's the issue. So I'm still able to get weight loss surgery? Not while you're gaining. I told you that, but this is what we can do. You have shown me you can do this once, so I'm confident you can do it again.